Hello everyone, in this video, I would like to show how can we program the sequence control and use the sequence control to control the command. Those commands will be used to control the motion, the positioning control. And we will use one application background. Also, we will use some existing motion control command. Those motion command we showed from the previous video. And in the previous video, we also show how can we set up the trend. And in this video, we will also use this trend to monitor the actual position and those actual position controlled by those command. And those command will be organized by the sequence control. All right, we will based on one application background. If you recall from the previous video, in this motion control command, our home position, that is a zero. So in this application background, our home position, that is the part loading position, that target is a zero, this position. And once the part got a load, it will travel to the position one. This is the assembling position. That position one, that is a 2000. So this position control, you can imagine that is a lead screw. So from the home position, loading position, travel to this assembling position. And after this assembling done, we travel to the unload position. This part will be unloaded by other tools. And after the part got unloaded, we will travel back to the minus 1000 position. This position is a tooling cleaning position. And after this cleaning done, we travel back to the home position, travel to the zero. After this, we do a new cycle, travel to the position one, assembling position. Go back to the 2000, this position. Okay, so our initial position, that is the home position. And then we travel to position one, two, three, and then go back to home. Okay, let's use the sequence control to program, to give the command to those variable and those variables will trigger the motion control command. And before we start to program the sequence control, let me import one data type, and I will paste this data type under this video. Okay, from here, right click, click this import data type, and let's click the UD underscore sequence. We can rename this a sequence name. Okay, in this case, I will use the same name, click OK. From this sequence data type, I prepare the start condition, step number, uh, step active, that bool, and step timer, because for each step, we could have a timer for each step, and reset, reset menu, and the complete signal. Okay, let's declare one sequence data variable, and the variable based on this UD sequence data type. Go to the parameter and the local tags from this main program and click this edit tax. From here, we can declare, okay? So, and uh, this date type, we will based on the UD sequence, so date type. And once we declare this variable, we expand here, all those variable can be declared. And at here, let's create a new routine. It named access one sequence control. Okay. Okay, and from this main routine, let's call this subroutine. Add a new run. Use GSR. Call this a sequence control. Okay. And then let's go back to our subroutine. Let's start our main meal. Firstly, let's declare one variable that is a cell in auto. And we use this logic. If the cell is not in auto, we will shift to manual mode. And the cell auto, we will declare this as a controller tag, okay? Okay, let's start to program the sequence control. Firstly, let's program the condition. So firstly, we need the cell in auto mode and our access don't have any error. If we recall, we go to find this access variable from this controller tag and expand this so firstly, the access fault should be equal to zero. So our access fault should equal to zero, okay? And also our access should be at a stop, this condition. So if we recall from the previous video, we defined 
from this MC underscore status. So we will use the standstill status. And from this uh, virtual access, we will use the stopping status and the move status if both of them off and average velocity is almost zero within a very small window. So we will define the access is at the standstill. If we are using the actual hardware access, so we can use the velocity standstill status. So we will use this standstill for the sequence control here at this condition. Okay, and other than this, we can also involve the safety should be all okay. Those signal, they are basically a space holder here. In your actual project, the sale auto safety okay, they should be controlled by other logic, okay? So those logic will control this sequence, application sequence, the start condition. And then next, so this is the first step. So at the beginning, our sequence is equal to zero. And our sequence number, so sequence number SEQ, and find out the integer dent. So that's a step. If the step equal to zero, the step beat. So that is a step active. So we'll pick the active zero. Okay. And then if it's equal to zero, if our condition is on, so we can move to the next step. We can move the step number to one. Okay, this is the initial step. And then next step, that is the sequence one. So at the step one, we need to power on our access, even if we are using the virtual access, but we'd better leave this step one here. So at this step one, firstly, let's program this structure here. At this step, we will give a power on command. If we recall from our MC instruction, the power on command, that is this, the positioning command server on, okay? So we will use this command. So we will control this command to on, back to this uh, sequence control. So here we will fire this command to on. And then we are waiting for the status. We are waiting for the servo action status. Also, we are waiting for the MC instruction for the power on the feedback from this MC instruction. So here, this used as a space holder because this access is uh, the physical access, but now we are using the virtual access. In actual case, we need to use this. But if you are using the virtual access, we do not need to use this, but I still want to program here as a space holder. So we need to use MC server on this done signal, okay? So go back to the sequence control and add here dot dn done signal. And after we got this done signal and we can put a timer here, for example, if we need to wait the motion system, give a motion system a little bit of time to power up, right? The motion need to energize, even if we get a feedback, but maybe the physical things need a little bit of time to power up to get it fully ready, right? So here we can put a timer. So we find the timer here. Okay, and this timer, we can use the sequence here and we use the step, this step timer already declared from that date type because this is step one. So this index number, that's step one. So this is very clear here. For example, here we can wait 100 milliseconds, wait for the physical things. And because we are using the virtual, so we temporarily jump here. Again, this leave here using as a space holder here, okay? And after this, we are waiting for this timer done, and then we move to the next step. And this is the first two step. And next steps, I will use the five as a step. For example, five, 10, 15, 20. So in case in your actual project, you need to add something in the middle. So we still have a four steps between the each step. We have a spare steps between the each steps. So next step, that's the five. So we will use the similar structure here. 
So at the step five, after the power, we need to move the access to home position. Basically, the home may be an area is we travel to the home area and try to find the home sensor. And after we find the home sensor, we will home the access, give an actual home position value to the access. So this is a find the home to find the home sensor. So at this step five, we need to trigger the motion, go to find the home position. And in actual case, usually we will use two function block to actual zero or home the access. Firstly, we will travel to home area or home zoom. That position can be close to the home sensor. And then we will execute the homing, the homing access to actually give a home position to the access. So that is the actual home. So firstly, we will travel back to the home area. So here I will trigger go home command and we will travel, trigger this access travel to home area first. And here we use this timer. When this timer done, we move to the step 10. Okay. And next, so we copy from the step five to step 10. So we use the similar structure. So at the step 10, we assume we find the home sensor. So touch the home sensor and then we will home the access. Okay. At this step 10, we will trigger the home, the access if we go back to the MC instruction. So we scroll up and we can find the home access. So safety okay, and this is a home command, and then use this uh, MC command, MAH, we will home the access, okay? That basically set a zero, that set a zero value to the access, and that zero come from the access setting. So if we double click this virtual access, and this homing, this position zero, will directly right into the access after we touch the sensor. This home sensor basically run as a space holder here. In actual case, this home sensor should be a physical sensor. And also this area should be involved a home sequence here. That will be a complex topic. So we'll assume once we go back to home. In actual case, the active homing will be a very complex. So basically we could have a five to eight scenario to home the sensor. Also we could involve the zero mark inside the encoder. But here to demonstrate, I will assume the home sensor is uh, the actual zero position. So I will demonstrate or assume this home sensor on. So we will zero the access just for a demonstration. But in actual case, it will be a complex sequence. So you better read the detail for the active homing that menu. And once we touch that sensor, we will assume that moment, that position that is zero. And also we can do a additional judgment. For example, we can use this limit LIM and compare this actual position. If this actual position within that home area, the home area could be like a minus 10 or plus 10, this area. And once it's reached to this area, and once we touch this sensor, so that time we will send the home command. So the home command, so we will send the home command. The home command is a command home access, right? So previous step, we travel, go back to the home area. And once we reach within this area, and once we touch the sensor, so boom, we will send home the access, right? And after this, the condition move to the next step. We are waiting for the home feedback, home feedback from this MC instruction. That is the home done. So we can copy this instant. So firstly, we can wait for this home done signal. Also, we can judge the home actual position. So if we recall from the previous video, we did this logic here. And this logic, that is a at position home, this speed. 
Okay, so from this uh, sequence control, we can add a condition here. Okay, and this timer, uh, this is the 10. So this timer we can set a zero because once we get home, we can immediately move to the next step, right? So this is a 10. This timer here basically leave as a space holder. So for each step, we have this timer. If we need, we can set a time. If we do not need that, we set a zero. Okay, next step, we can move to the 15. Okay, till this step, we are at the home position. And this position is a part loading position, right? And then we can move to the next step. So I can copy this step, copy, paste, travel to position one, go to the assembling position. So this step is a 15. And at the 15, we need to travel to the first position. So the command for the first position, scroll down, the command for the first position is this. So we need to turn this variable on. So from the sequence control, we will control this move to the position one on. And after we trigger this go to position one, this command while waiting for the actual position, if the actual position got a position one, if we recall from the MC status, we have the logic. So that represent at position one. So we will use this speed. And here, so we trigger this command then we are waiting for the feedback, waiting for or judge if the access at this position. Once we add this position, we can move to the next step. So 15, once we add this position, we can wait for 100 milliseconds and then we can move to the next step. So that is a 20. Or we can set a longer so that we can look at once we reach this position, we are waiting for uh, maybe one second and then we move to the next step from the trend We can clearly see that waiting time so we can set 1000 milliseconds here and Next step that is step 20. We will travel to the position 2. That is a load position Okay, I will copy and paste and This step firstly, we will write the title so let's travel to position two, and this is a unload, and this is a load position, okay? And this is the step 20, step 20, 20. And we will travel to the position two, okay? And then we are waiting for if the access at the position two. And after this, we still wait for, and this timer will use the 20. And we are waiting for one second. And then this timer expire, we will send the sequence to 25, okay? And the next step, from this unload, we will travel to the cleaning position. That cleaning position, that is a minus 1000 position, position three. Okay, so copy this step and paste. So next step, that's the 25. And here, that's the 25. Okay. okay, we will write this the 25 and travel to positioning three. That is a clean position. Okay, clean the tool. Okay, so step 25, 25, and at the 25, we will send the third position command. And then we are waiting for the third position. We can wait for two seconds here. And once the timer expire, we can send to the next position. 30. Next step, after this clean position, position three, we need to go back to the home position. We will go back from this sequence and basically jump over this power axis and go to the step five, find the home position. Go back to the step five. That automatically find the home sensor and find this home sensor, zero the axis and from this home position, go to the positioning one. 
So basically, we restart this sequence. But from this step one, we do not need to repower the access. So at here, to power up the servo, we can involve that servo action on signal. So here, that means if so here that means if our access is not powered, so we can turn on the power. And if our access already powered on, we will shift to the next step. So basically send the motion to home position, zero the access again, and then travel to the position one, right? So from the last step here, basically we can send this sequence to zero. From the this step, move to 30. So that means at the step 30, so this is the last step. So at the step 30, the step 30, that is the final step. Move to step, move to step zero, okay? So at the step 30, the only things we need to do is rewrite this step number to zero. So from here, we can put a timer here. Still use the similar structure. So this is a step 30. So at here, we can wait uh, one second here. And after the timer expire, so this time we can write a zero. Basically, write this uh, sequence number to zero and we will restart this sequence. Okay, this is a very simple demonstration. Actually, in actual case, we need to involve multiple sensors at this uh, condition for moving to the next step. For example, at here, once we get home, actually we are waiting for the part loading sensors. For example, we could have a multiple sensors or cameras check if the part actually got uh, loaded correctly. And once we got the part loaded, the tooling will hold this part, travel to the assembly position, right? So basically the conditions to move to the next step like this, we need to involve multiple condition or sensors here. For testing purpose, I skip them. Keep in mind, we need to involve multiple sensors. That condition will move into the next step. So basically we finish this sequence. And if we reveal, once we go back to the zero, now we are waiting for this condition. If the condition is still okay, then we will judge if the access got powered, and then we will find a home again. And after this, the sequence will run again and again. Let's test that. So download the program. Okay, restart the controller. Okay, so firstly, so I will use the watch list and here I can drag this uh, sequence number. So we will know which step the sequence at. And we will drag this uh, cell auto. Basically, once we shift to auto, the sequence will start. And the safety okay, we will assume our safety is okay. And now the system is in the manual mode. We need to shift to auto mode and start this uh, sequence. So we can watch this sequence number. Also, we can watch this actual position. Now, if I set this cell to auto, now we can see it travel to the first position now. And our step is a 15. Okay, now the step is at 20. So we travel to 5,000, and then now it travel to the minus 1,000 position. So step at 25. Positioning three. And once we reach to minus 1,000, then the sequence will change to zero and we will restart the sequence again. Now the sequence stopped at a 10. So let's check out what the reason is stuck at a 10. OK. 
okay so we can see using the sequence number we can quickly diagnose and we can quickly locate the problem so let's watch that the step at the 10 and at the 10 by the position the access was not home to check out why this access was not controlled to go home position okay from here let's cross reference and let's go to this mc instruction here okay so i found the reason firstly two reasons firstly to travel go home i didn't set the go home speed the speed is zero so here firstly i can set 200 speed here also from this uh, sequence control wise so from the step 5 to step 10 we need to consider this pc complete signal so we can copy so at here we can double click copy this instant name so we need to use this uh, instant dot pc so okay so we can accept the change here and then go back to the sequence control the step five at here this we need to involve the condition move to the next step so we need to paste this uh, absolute home position dot complete pc so after this command complete and then we move to the next step to guarantee we actually go home this area let's re-trigger let's write this uh, sequence number to five re-trigger go home command okay and then we can see so access travel to home and once we get home we move to the 15 step and then it travel to the first position that is a 2000 that is a 2000 that position now the step is a 15 position one okay now it travel to the next position step 20 so step 20 we are traveling to the positioning two Okay, now it's at a 25 step. It's traveling to the minus 1000. Clean position. And once we get a minus 1000, so we'll see 30, then go zero, then go five again. So this sequence will run automatically, cycle again and again. Meantime, we can use the trend we set up from the previous video. So double click. So we set up the actual position and the actual velocity. And we can click the run. And then we can watch this positioning change. So travel to 5000. Then go back to minus 1000. And this ride, that is a speed. And we are running the minus speed. This is reverse direction. Okay, now we add minus 1000, wait for two seconds, and then go home, go to home position, and then directly travel to 2000, the first position, assembling position. And we have a timer here. This is the loading position. Okay, next position, assembly position, 2000. And after this 2000, we travel to 5000. That is a load position. Okay, after the unload position, then we go back to the minus 1000. That is a clean position. Meantime, we can watch this speed. If the speed looks too sharp or the mechanical sounds not too smooth, so we can change the acceleration and the deceleration, make the movement become smooth. All right, as we can see, using the sequence control, we can quickly diagnose where the problem. We will know at each step which main task this axis is doing. 
So for example, this 25, we know it's doing the cleaning precision job. So when it's traveling, this step number is on and we are waiting for this feedback. If we stuck at this 25, basically maybe this position haven't arrived at yet, then we will know the traveling or the tooling maybe somewhere is stuck there. We send the command, but we haven't got this position. So maybe we got a crash uh, or maybe the drive system got something wrong. So using this sequence number, we can quickly locate where we add and where we need to troubleshoot. And also using this trend curve, we can clearly see the actual position and the speed. If we need to do some optimization, we can clearly see where we need to optimize. All right, that is for today. For the sequence control and using the trend to monitor the actual position movement. Okay, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.